What's up, everyone? It's Matt Rosick, and uh, I haven't done a video in a while. I haven't done much painting lately because um, I've been spending so much time trying to find a job. <laughs> I haven't been in my studio a whole lot. So uh, I kind of lost some uh, mojo in painting for a little. I go through I go through phases where I just kind of not into it. I'm kind of in one of those phases right now. So that's kind of what I do. I, I, I paint, 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 and I just kind of lose the mojo for a little bit. And I'm kind of in that phase right now, a little bit of a funk. But... This piece came in to do for a client and I wanted to do an intro video of it because this is probably one of my favorite sculpts from my buddy, Troy McDivitt. It's an older sculpt, it's a rhino, and I absolutely love this sculpt. It is so fantastic. Um, so one of the, this may be the one that went up for sale a little while ago, a couple, about a couple of weeks ago. Not sure, but I saw it went up for sale. I did. I, unfortunately, I didn't was able to grab it because it, if one of these come up, it goes super quick. And I don't remember the price on it, but I think it was relatively inexpensive for the piece. Um, I don't know what these go for. I'm guessing. If I had to guess, maybe three or four hundred dollars for one of these guys. Um, he's not a huge piece. It's not a quarter scale. I'd consider it like a one sixth scale. Um, but the sculpt on this is just so freaking cool. It's got so much character to it. Troy killed it. Um, I don't know who the producer was. So if anyone can comment down below who produced this piece, uh, go ahead and do so. But this came in when I was uh, contacted to do this piece for uh, uh, a client. I'm like, yeah, man. I told him what I would charge the duty set and he shipped it, he shipped it right to me. So this is down the pipe down in a little ways. I have to get a few more projects done before I do this guy but I want to do a video on it because it's such a neat piece. So um, as you can see, this is Rhino. And what's the, my favorite part of the sculpt? It's his face. I just love, love this face sculpt. It is so phenomenal. Phenomenally, is that a word? Phenomenally, phenomenally <laughs> done. I love the attitude. I love the character in his face. Um, just, Fabulous job by Troy. Troy is uh, a great sculptor. If you don't know Troy McDivitt, check him out. Um, one of the best out there. And he's a super cool guy. Just one of the nicest people you can meet. Uh, so anyway, this is Rhino, as I said. Love the sculpt. Love the texture on the skin, the rhinoceros skin. Um, love the back. It's freaking amazing. Look at all the wrinkles and stuff. I mean, it just looks, to me, this is what Rhino should look like. I love it. Um, the quality of the kit is excellent. It's very, very good. Um, Rhino himself is hollow, but the walls are nice thickness. I can tell they're, they have a good thickness to them, so um, no worries there. Um, the arms are solid, and um, the fit is very good. They'll have to do some putty work, to, but the way they cut it, they did a very good job. They undercut there where a wrinkle is, so um, there's... The putty work should be minimal to get that to fit. I may putty this guy. I mean, I may glue this guy together today. I think it would be a relatively quick little thing. Same here. Not much putty work. A little bit of a gap. It's a little bit of putty, and then uh, to match the skin texture, pretty easily to to do. The only real cleanup on this is the mold line, um, which it's a little bit. Some areas there's a little bit of a step and other areas is just a mold line. So that's going to take the longest to clean up. Um, luckily it's not real bad up here in the top and the head. So you just have to go through, you kind of have to seam it down smooth and then go back in there and kind of re scribe some of the skin texture with the a sculpting tool. And like for that, I would use something like, um, Oh, what I got here somewhere I got, I'm not going to do like a lot of work on this, but somewhere I got a really great little scraper tool. Where is that? Where the hell did it go? I haven't used it in a while. Uh, where'd it go? Is this it? No, that's not it. Somewhere I got a little old sculpting tool with a little hook on it and it's perfect for this kind of thing. Or I can do my usual, I use the back side of an exacto blade and I go in there and kind of rescribe some of the skin texture. So Rhino looks great. The base is pretty simple. It's solid, but it's some uh, cinder blocks with dirt and rock. And it's, uh, let's see, uh, four pieces. We got the base here like that. And these pieces fit flawlessly. 
Um, I'm debating whether I should just glue, the, glue these on or just leave them, maybe just magnetize them, just simply for uh, packing purposes. Um, like Rhino himself really doesn't even need to be, I'll probably just put a magnet in there. He doesn't need any pen. It's a very good fit. Um, but let's get an overall size on this guy. Now the arms won't stay in right now, just because they haven't been pinned. So let's see how big he is. Again, he's not huge. One sixth scale, maybe closer to one, maybe one seventh scale, maybe a little smaller than one sixth scale. Um, yeah, he's only 13 inches tall on the base. Rhino himself is only 11 inches tall. I'm not sure how tall Rhino is in the comics. Um, this is a piece where if I own this, I don't think I would sell it. I just think it's a great, great skull. It'd have to be a pretty significant, like if I had to own this piece, I built and painted for myself, it'd have to be a pretty good chunk of change because I think it's just a phenomenal piece. Um, the base is seven and a half inches deep. And the width on the base, I'll take this off, is about eight inches. So eight, roughly eight by eight on the base and then got about 13 inches in height. And it's got one loose cinder block where, um, I'm not sure exactly where it's supposed to go. It's flat on the bottom here. So to me, it, I think it just kind of sits back here. It's just a loose piece and kind of put it wherever you want. Um, oh, 2012 was and this is sculpted choice. I uh, signed it down here in the very bottom, 2012. So this is an older sculpted choice before I knew Troy um, or had ever met him. Um, uh, that I am looking at this, now that I have him here, this is the first time I actually really took a hard look at him. I may have to do a little bit of work here on the, whoops, on the fit on the base. Got a little bit of a gap down here, it's a little buggy, so I may just go in there and do my Bondo trick where I put him in there, Bondo it, and get him to just fit a little bit better. We'll see. Um, not sure that... Once, it, once these are on, once these are on there, you don't see that part. So, but then again, from the front, it fits perfectly. There's no gaps. Just a little bit. He wobbles a little bit. So I may bondo that just so it's a better fit. And then we got the two arms. And they come in. And there he is, Rhino. Great, great skull. This would be a killer piece in Warren Porter scale. It'd be big and his presence would be just really, really menacing. But again, the best part of this whole sculpt to me is that face. This looks so great. My exposure's up. We're gonna take this down just a little bit. There we go. Love it. So there's just a short little intro video. I will do a, a build and paint series on this. Um, I don't think this will take very long to paint. Um, once it's ready to go, I can probably get it painted in a couple days. Um, I've seen some really great paint ups of this and um, <clears throat> one of my favorites, I can't remember the painter because I don't have it at the top of my head. We had a lot of great underlying kind of yellow tones, especially like in the, in the ankles and the knees. Um, so I may kind of replicate that a little bit um, underneath the gray, some yellow tones and some green tones. Um, so I just think it looks really good. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably end up uh, hand painting the face because um, I can get in there with um, some brushes and stuff and we're just really good to town on the details on his face, just hand painting it. But yeah, love this piece. Just love it, love the sculpt. It's probably one of my favorites from Troy. Um, just has a ton of character and the casting of the kit's very good. Like I said, the major make cleanup is the mold line on Rhino himself. The arms have it too, but again, Nothing too, nothing too bad. Um, yeah, so there you go. A little short 10 minute video on Rhino. But uh, stay tuned for a build series on this guy. Like I said, he's down the pipeline after I finish um, several other projects I've got going on. But uh, there you go. As always, thanks for watching. It's Matt Rosick. Catch you guys next time. Leave you with a nice close up of this face here. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.